Hey everyone, it's Josh here. And today we're back with another software tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look into the platform MailChimp. Now this is a beginner's guide, so if you have absolutely no experience using MailChimp or are just looking for a few tips and tricks that may level up your game, this video is gonna be perfect for you. Without further ado, we're gonna jump right into it because while MailChimp has started as simply an email marketing tool, it has started to evolve into something so much greater than that. With so many more users than there's ever been in previous years and continued support, MailChimp is a great thing for starting a newsletter, but it offers so much more than just a traditional newsletter experience. So let's get right into it and show you everything you need to know about using MailChimp. Now for the pricing information, it really depends upon three things. The first one, how many contacts do you have? How many people are you actually gonna be sending emails to? The second one, how frequently are you gonna be sending out emails? And finally, what sort of tools do you want that are only available on the higher level plans? Now, in our case, we're gonna be starting out with the basic 500 contacts, and we have a couple options available to us. Free, in which we can send out 1,000 emails a month, and we have one seat. Then we have Essentials, which starts out for free for one month, but then goes to $13 a month. We have 5,000 email sends and three seats, and then it just goes up the further we go, and you pay more money, essentially, depending on how many emails you're sending out and how many people you're sending those emails to. And then, if you go to their premium plan, you get a ton more features that aren't available on the standards, but those are really for high level business marketing. And for our purposes in the beginner tutorial, we're just gonna be sticking with the free plan and trying that out. So let's get right into actually how to use MailChimp. So in this case, I'm just gonna hit sign up for free, or if you're looking at this from the home screen, all we have to do to get started is hit the start free trial. And if we click on this and simply hit sign up free, we get taken to the screen right here, which says sign up for MailChimp. So I'll put my temporary email in here and I'll put my username and we'll, we'll enter the, uh, the you know eight character minimum and I'll just put in my email stuff there. And in this case, I'll hit sign up. Now, when we actually get into the program, it'll actually ask us a couple of questions. Now it's gonna say, check your email because it's actually gonna send you a verification code. So I'll go to my temporary email here and we'll hit the activate account button. And once we hit that, in a new tab, it'll load the page and hopefully it'll take us right into MailChimp and it'll ask us those questions. First, information about us. I'll say this is my information, Josh Business. And it'll say a phone number. In my case, I'm just gonna put a dummy phone number for now. And in this case, I'll just say next. And it'll ask us what our business address is. Now, this is to follow anti-spam laws because when it comes to email marketing specifically, you have to follow it so that you're not gonna be spamming people with emails, which is a big no-go. So in our case, I'm just gonna type in a, an email address here and we'll put that in and we'll hit next. And then it'll ask us what our top goal of MailChimp is. Now, in our case, I'm just gonna hit the top one, drive sales, revenue, conversions, but you can customize this to your liking. So getting through here, I'm just gonna select all of these and I highly encourage you to follow along in real time with me because it'll make it a lot easier for you to actually learn these new tools as we're going through them. So it'll ask us the most important question, how many email contacts do we have? Now, in my case, I'm just gonna say zero to 500 because this is assuming that I'm just starting out and we'll hit the next button here. It'll ask us how do we sell to our customers and we'll just answer these questions and we'll just hit the skip button for this stuff. And now it'll ask us to choose that right plan and we'll continue with the free tab. At this point, it'll say preparing your account. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this has been typically used for email marketing, but it also starting to offer a lot more in the way of content marketing, actual website marketing, things of that nature. So to get started creating our very first email, all we have to do is go and hit that create button or go to the email tab on the left here and hit regular. And we'll say this is the internal email name. So I'm just gonna say first email, just to start us off. And we'll hit the begin button and it'll say keep your subscribers engaged and it'll ask us who we're sending this email to. We can add recipients, who's it from, what's the subject line, send time, content. Uh, we also have things like you know the share link, add a social post to your email, et cetera, et cetera. We're actually gonna go and we're gonna finish this later, but this is the point where you can actually start to customize and design your very own email. Now we're gonna hit finish later here, but now we get taken back to this screen where we can actually see campaigns, automations, audience, analytics, website content, and integrations. Now we're not gonna go over everything today as to not overwhelm you. We're gonna start strictly with the beginner stuff, starting with emails, automations, audience, analytics, and website. So obviously for campaigns here, this is where we can see the actual campaigns we're running. In our case, we've got first email, which we just created. We can see and view them by the different statuses, ongoing, draft, completed. And these are the different types here, SMS, automations, landing page, etc. And if we go and hit the create new, we get back to that screen where we're creating something that gets noticed, a regular email, an automation, a landing page, which again, if we hit design email, takes us into what we were at before. So in our case, we're gonna finish this later again, but if I actually wanna go here and go and create a more dynamic email, what I can do is go to the automations tab. 
Now, while a lot of this is only available in the more expensive plans, automations allow you to actually customize the way that your customers interact with them. Because typically for emails, you're gonna be converting a lot higher when you actually have people signed up. Because unlike other marketing tools, usually when somebody signs up for your email list, they're doing it willingly and you're not spamming them. Again, the point of this is not to spam people with your email marketing. We want people to be actively engaged. But if we wanna design an email that looks good and works, how can we do that? Well, we'll show you right now. So if we actually wanna go about designing our first email, all we have to go is to the side menu here under content and hit the email templates where we can view our saved templates or we can design a new one to fit our brand. Now for this one, we don't have any saved templates because this is a new account I just created. So let's go and create a template or we can actually go to the content studio, which if we go to the content studio, we can actually upload our products, Instagram, logo, you know, upload our images, etc. In our case, we're just gonna to wanna to go directly to creating a template. And when we hit create template here, we're actually gonna be taken into a whole bunch of templates that we could possibly choose from. And if we truly wanna go and create a custom email design, we can do that. But for our purposes here, we're just gonna go with a minimal email. We can hit the apply button and we'll say first template. Templates are really good if you wanna design and send out the similar emails each time. So in our case, we're just gonna say first template and hit save. This is what's gonna take us into our email customizer. Now, starting with this template, we have the ability to go and change this information. So we can have our logo at the top here, a little bit of an information, you know, button, maybe that links to somewhere, an image, et cetera, et cetera. But on the side here, we can see we can add things like headings, buttons, images. If I wanted another image under the button, it's just as easy to drag and drop like so. The way you design your emails is very similar to other creation tools like Elementor, if you've ever designed a WordPress site, but it's very playful. Drag and drop makes it easy for beginners to pick up. Luckily, you don't have to do any coding, but you do have the ability to add custom code in there if you know what you're doing. For our case, I'm gonna assume that we're just sticking to strictly drag and drop, or if I wanted to add a logo down here or maybe right click on this and delete things, we have the ability to go through and customize this to be however we want it to be. So in my case, let's just say that this is my first email and I'll just, I'll just say Josh's first email and we'll hit save and exit. Now we have that email template set up so that we can load this anytime we wanna create a new email and send it out to our mailing list. But in our case, how would we actually go about getting a mailing list? Well, we have a couple options here. We can either import one from a list of contacts we already have and we can do that by going to the audience dashboard and hitting the add your contacts button. Now, when we hit the add your contacts button, we can either import it from another service, upload a file, whether that's a CSV or a tab delimited TXT file, or we can actually just copy and paste them directly in. Now, obviously you don't wanna have people sign up for your email who didn't volunteer to be signed up. So I highly encourage you to make sure that everyone you're actually adding here are okay with being added to your newsletter. But if we go back here, MailChimp also offers us the ability to create our own landing page where people can sign up on their own. We just send them the link to the landing page or put it in our social and anytime somebody comes to your landing page and types their email in and hits sign up, they're automatically signed up for your newsletter. And we can see that by going down to the website tab here, go into website and hitting the set up your site button. From this, let's just say, yep, that's the name of my site. I'm okay with that and hit edit my site. This is a different tab and allows us to create a custom landing page. The difference with this is that MailChimp offers the ability to create a custom landing page for people to actually sign up for your newsletter. So in my case, we've got this simple one here and we can choose its styles, cookie banner pages, etc. In my case, I'm just gonna hit strictly into edit page and look at this, we've already got a landing page here. We can do talk up our brand and this is obviously the default one we have set up for us. This is a footer for your site, all the information here created by MailChimp and we can essentially make a landing page just like this. Now, if I wanna actually go and edit section, let's say I wanna go and add in somewhere where somebody can sign up for a newsletter. I just have to hover over this plus icon here and I can hit add section. And in the bottom right hand corner, we can see intro, text, text and image, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe I wanna put a quote in here and I can choose the layout for the quote. Uh, let's pick this one right here. And it says, are you excited about your business? And you know, we could put testimonials in there. Now, of course, depending on what our actual business goals are, the landing page that we're gonna design using MailChimp is gonna be different. So in our case, I don't wanna actually have a quote here, so I can just, you know, go ahead to this section and uh, go up here to the top left-hand corner and just delete that. And it says, are you sure you wanna remove the section? I'll, I'll hit remove, I'm okay with that. And in this case, I am okay with that. You know, this is just the templated version, but you can go and customize it on your own. And I'll go to the top right-hand corner here and hit done. Or if I wanna actually change the style, I can change things like colors and have the ability to change those anytime after the fact. But in my case, I'm just gonna say, yep, we're done. And I'm gonna hit publish. Now it's gonna say, you're about to publish all the pages of your site. All visible pages will be viewable online and in search and results. So in my case, I'm not gonna publish this because it's just a template site. So we'll hit cancel. But 
this would be the place where you can actually publish your landing page to the world. And we can see that if I hit the preview here, we can see what it actually looks like across desktop and mobile. So we click the mobile tab at the top here. This is what it looks like. I don't like that find us. So obviously you would have to go and change it to fit your specific business needs. Um, but we'll say exit page and we'll go back here and we'll just say a finish later. Now, we've already gone over a couple of MailChimp's most powerful features, how to actually import your contacts, how to actually create a landing page and how to actually create your first email through the template. Now, if we actually wanna go to the analytics tab, which for the email dashboard, as we can see, we've got some sample data in here just to see how it summarizes it. We can try it out. We click that. We can see things like how we monitor performance, our best emails, what emails we've sent out have a click rate that's really high, what the recipients are, what's the open rate, what's the unsubscribe rate, et cetera. And we can track the actual conversions. We can see revenue per recipient, and then we can see the performance over time. This is all the analytics that are related to the newsletters that we're creating and all the content marketing tools that are available to us. The analytics are right here. If we click on the reports tab here, we can actually go and see all the reports for our campaigns. In our case, we have one contact and it's just me. Um, we can see campaigns and see how that compares, you know, comparative reports. Now that's for standard and premium users. And then of course our website, which is the website we just created. We can see how many people visited it, clicked on it and subscribed to our newsletter based on that. And we can also view a report on that. If we go to the website, we can see things like the settings, change the site title, change the icon, all the things that are gonna be visible in search engines. And now down here, we have content, as I showed you earlier, where you can upload all your images, branding, colors, et cetera. But now let's actually get back to that sign up form. So if we go to the audience tab here and go to all contacts, again, we can see all of our contacts here. Now this is just mine. We can see what address I've put me on, you know, birthday, whether I'm subscribed or not. I can go and add my contacts, you know, either adding a subscriber, we can have subscriber preferences. This is where I control the information about my audience. And if I actually wanna go and create a sign up form for somebody to sign up to our email, again, there are tons of ways we can actually go and do that. We have the form builder, the pop-up form, an embedded form that we could put directly under our website, contact form, actually integrate it with a ton of other tools. You can see we've got Squarespace in there, QuickBooks, you know, WooCommerce, we've got Shopify and all that. And then we also have our sign up landing page. Now that's different from our website because where our landing page is strictly just for that website that we create, the sign up landing page is specifically to get people to sign up to our newsletter. Now, in my case, we're gonna simply stick with the most basic one, form builder. And going into that, we can see what the information we can actually have and ask for when we're creating this. So I'll just call it, you know, sign up form. We can have recaptures, unsubscribe form. We can create whatever form we want, honestly. And we can say, let subscribers pick the email format. And in our case, we can just go ahead and build it here. Now by default, this is what it's set up for us. The email address, first name, address, phone number, birthday, et cetera. But we can actually go and remove some of these and we can say, yep, I do not want to ask them their birthday. That's not really something I need when I'm having people sign up. Honestly, when I'm having them sign up for the email, I don't really need their address. That feels a little bit invasive for you know a basic thing. And I can customize this however I want. But if I wanna go and add in that thing I just deleted or just add in any other form types, I just go to the right-hand side here, find what I want, and just click on it. And then it'll appear right at the bottom of my form. Now we have things like field settings where we can see what the label is, what the field tag is, if it's a required field, meaning that they have to fill it out, otherwise they will be unable to actually submit the form. If it's visible, hidden, help text, what the default merge tag country is, and we can have those fields saved. And then if we actually go to the design it tab, we can actually go and make it nice. We can customize the background, etc. And in our case, oh, that doesn't look too good. So we'll, we'll keep it on that, you know, white background or maybe make it like a slight gray. We can go to the header, make this slightly bigger if we want to, uh, the outer wrapper. Pretty much we have the options to actually go and customize this. And that brings us over to back to creating an actual email. When we're actually creating the email here, we have the option for regular plain text using that template that we created earlier. We have things like the automations, the website, store appointments, landing page, creative assistant, and we have things like sign up form, surveys, ad, social post, postcard, whatever we actually wanna have set up. So in our case, again, we're gonna stick with that simple email or we could actually, if we exit, go back to that original email we actually set up earlier by going back to the campaigns tab. Now, if I go into this here, we're gonna go to that first email and just simply hit the down arrow key. And we can see that we can either view the email or replicate it. In our case, we're gonna go through and hit the edit button. Now, there is a ton of information that we kind of skimmed through here that I really wanted to dive deep in on at the end of this video. So we can see things like to, from, subject, etc. But 
when we're actually going through and creating this, we have the ability to customize it however we want. When we're saying, who is this email from? Enter all that basic information. That is what is the most important part because obviously that's where it's gonna be going. But if we go to the content section here and hit the design email, this is where not creating a template, but we're actually gonna be creating and designing the email ourselves using that same tool from earlier, using things like, again, the MailChimp templates, the save template that we created earlier, recently sent emails, draft emails, or code your own, where we can actually paste in code, import from URL, etc. But a lot of those require you to upgrade to a paid plan. So we're gonna simply go to that save template we had earlier and simply hit apply. And that's gonna push it right into our email designer. And so now if we're good to go with this email, we hit save and exit. And now we've assigned that email to our campaign. This makes it easy to switch interchangeably between different emails, depending on which campaign you're actually working on. But we can also create surveys using MailChimp. And we can do that by going over to the audience tab and scrolling down until we find surveys. Get insights by collecting feedback from your audience. If we click on that, we can see that the current audience is my one person and we'll say no thanks for that for now. And we'll go and create the survey. Or we can actually choose one of the templates that are already available to us. Post-purchase survey, post-purchase emoji survey, whatever that means. Uh, in our case, we're just gonna hit create survey. And again, we can actually ask the questions, you know, what would you like to learn? And add introduction, radio buttons. And we have the ability to go and create a custom survey that somebody could fill out, whether that be coming from our landing page, et cetera. We can actually gather information based on what they submit. Uh, in our case, we're gonna hit finish later. Now, one of the most important points when actually creating your emails is is the tagging system. You can actually group people by tags. If we go to the tag section under audience and click this, we can see that our audience has one contact and one of these is subscribed. What actually happens when we create a tag is we can say, um, yeah, example, conference lead, influencer. We can say to all the influencers we're sending these emails to. We can actually add people and tag them based on what we wanna set them up under. So for example, if somebody is an influencer and also an investor, we could create those two tags and know when we're sending certain people certain emails. Now for the automatic tagging, we can actually automatically tag our contacts using the API. And if we click on that, we can see that this is getting into more of the advanced territory. So you have the ability to go do that, but we're gonna stick with the basics for now of just typing it in the simple old fashioned way. So if we get back to this here, we can see that now I've got the influencer tag. And if I wanna go and assign that, I can either export that as a CSV, send regular campaign, send plain text campaign. But essentially I have a way to select and send an email to the subset based on those tags. For example, if I have 500 email contacts, but I only wanna send it to the influencers that I've tagged on there, well, every person who's been tagged on my email contact list under the tag influencer, if I simply go down to this influencer tag here and hit send plain text campaign, I can send a campaign specifically to those people. And if I wanna do it just after the fact where I say in the to section, if we go back to the campaigns here, I can actually select that as well. This is a place where if I want first email to be sent to only that member, only that tag, we can actually say, add recipients and we can either import the contacts yet. Oh, it wants us to import contacts. But in our case, if we have those contacts imported, we have the ability to actually go and add them based on their tags, which makes it a lot easier to customize who you're sending your emails to. And there we are. Everything you need to hit the ground running using MailChimp. Whether you're gonna be creating a landing page on MailChimp, getting at your content marketing, or you're actually gonna be sending your first email campaign. I am hoping I've given you all the tips, tricks, and knowledge that you need to actually get started using MailChimp. And let me know down in the comments below if you wanna see me go more into depth on this platform, because I'd be happy to do so. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. As always, my name is Josh Mountain, and I'll see you in the next one.